number one. My friend had mentioned that she had one, so I asked her to pull the board out so I could check it out. At first, she said no, but then agreed to do it as long as she didn't have to participate. After she had the board set up, I simply asked, Is there anyone in here? Nothing. So, being a dumb teenager, I followed up with, If anyone is in here and not talking, you're a coward. The board was put away after that. Fast forward about a week later and have me sleeping upstairs on my couch. I wake up on a stereotypical stormy night. Thunder and lightning, wind and rain, the works. I look around to see why I woke up and couldn't see a thing and decide to try and fall back asleep. After lying there for about 30 seconds, I hear from downstairs. Get the boy. In a very raspy, wispy voice. I open my eyes and listen. Still, nothing. I start to go back to sleep. Get the boy. It was much louder this time. Then, my downstairs door <laughs> slams shut. I freak the hell out because nobody slept down there and we had no drafts. Number two. I have a terrifying story about a Ouija board. I got a call from my cousin who said that he, his brother, dad, and best friend were using a Ouija board in their basement. Prior to starting, they took a large porcelain doll out of the room because it was creepy and placed it in the adjacent room face down on a pile of towels. My cousin took a short break because the board was just spouting nonsense and went to take a shit. His dad, brother, and friend started asking the board questions without him. One of the questions was who is in the other room. It just started spouting random numbers, and when my cousin came back into the room, his brother said that it wasn't working, that they were going to put it away, and he showed him the answer to the last question he asked. My cousin then replied with, Dude, that's my social security number. Then they started to talk to whatever started spewing answers out. It told my cousin he would die in the Air Force. At this point, they tell the entity that they are communicating with to prove itself. It then spelled out the word, D O. L. L. Doll. They opened the door to check on the porcelain doll that they had laid in the other room. And when they opened the door, the doll was standing upright in the front of the door, staring right at them. Everyone freaked and ran out of the house. His best friend burned the Ouija board and I think he almost went nuts for a few months. My cousin, for some reason, then joined the Air Force and is on a base in Europe now. Number three. We all asked it a question that only the person asking would know the answer to. It would successfully answer all of the questions. One question that somebody asked was, what was the name of the boat I went on a cruise on when I was six? It answered correctly. We played with this thing forever. We had cold spot experiences and would place a candle where the cold spot was and the candle would burn sideways, not straight up and down. One night, we all asked how long we had left to live. And this is where it gets scary. Everybody asked, 
and they had 50 to 60 plus years left. I go to ask, and it says, 10. 10 years, I ask, and it says, 10 days. I pretty much shit a brick at this point. It said I was going to be killed in a car accident by a girl named Emma. We would ask it three days later, and it would say I had seven days left. I ask it two days later, and it said I would have five days left, and so on. I'm freaking out at this point, carrying a Bible in my pocket and wearing a big cross. I finally tell my dad, and he doesn't believe me, so I made one out of a piece of paper and used a CD to show him. It worked, and he flipped out and told me that I didn't have to go to school on the day I was supposed to die. I didn't go to school, and nothing happened. Number 4 I have no evidence, and I do not care if you don't believe me. I've used a board with results and let something into my home. I was also physically assaulted by this entity. It started out with that feeling like you're being watched and doors closing, footsteps on the hard wood when you're home alone. It progressed slowly into being kept awake by something shaking the bed or pulling off your covers, sometimes even whispering your name. The board would disappear for days on end, then show up in places you never would have put it. I became obsessed with it. Then, it was a black mass in the corner of the room, or the silhouette of a man watching you from the doorway. After that, it escalated pretty quickly. I had my hair pulled, fingers pricked, legs scratched, and even choked. I was once held down in bed while this thing whispered in my ear in what could only have been Latin. We had our house blessed, and the bad thing hasn't shown back up. Just the normal occurrences now. But I will never again play with one of those boards. Number 5 I was staying at a hotel with friends in Northern Ontario for a chess tournament. Yeah, geeky, I know. Can't exactly remember the town. Anyway, we were looking for some thrills at night, and someone busted out a board. One of those official ones that you can get from Toys R Us. We asked a few questions I can't remember, but I will never forget when we asked if it knew if any of us were going to die. Yeah, I know a strange question to ask, but it spelled out a person's name that was with us at the time, and then a date which was approximately a year later. My friend died a year later from cancer in his knee. He knew about it for six months before he died. To this day, I am still curious about the device, but I'll be damned if I ever touch it again. Number 6 A girl brought her authentic Ouija board made out of maple straight from Salem. Ironically, she was very Catholic, but loved her board. It was a very interesting few nights in the dorm. I think the second night we were playing with it, and it was going slow. Not much movement. I had my hand off the planchette because I still wasn't so sure about the thing. Suddenly, it was like ice-cold fingers grabbed into my shoulders ever so slightly, and this terrible feeling in the back of my mind just came to the surface. I looked to the board, and the planchette started moving in a demonic pattern. I think 
figure eights this time. I looked at the girl and said, I have a bad feeling about that, in time for her to realize what was happening. She stopped the movement and bid the spirit goodbye. In that moment, the icy grip loosened and all was well. It was after this that the girl explained that the figure eight meant that something was trying to get out of the board. Believe it or not, this is common lore that goes with Ouija usage. Number seven. When I was about 14, my best friend had a sleepover birthday party. Being the silly little girls that we were, we decided to make a Ouija board to play with, not really knowing any of the rules like making it say goodbye. After an hour or so, I wandered off to read some tarot cards and watch the rest of the exorcist with the other couple of girls who didn't find that much enjoyment in communing with spirits. Rereading that last sentence, I do sound like such a stereotype, but I still use tarot cards though, so I never really grew out of this phase it seems. Here's where it got weird though. After I left, the spirit talking to my friends changed. As in, it switched to a different spirit altogether. His name was Max, and he was looking for me. I've never known a Max in my life. My friends yelled out what he was saying as it moved, and I was riding off as them teasing me until he started giving them information about me that no one at the party knew. Things about minor abuse I was facing and the other little things. That freaked me right out. I begged for them to stop playing. Even after, Max tried to convince me that he was not trying to hurt me. My friends were at least nice and stopped playing before I started crying and I thought that was the end of it. The next time a Ouija board came out was the next year, and only one girl from the original party was among the group. We were baking a cake, so when the buzzer went off, she and I headed up to take it out of the oven. When we got back to the group, another girl turned to me and asked, Um, who's Max? Apparently, he stuck around after that first time. If my friends want to use a Ouija board, they don't invite me over unless they want to speak to Max. He always seems to be around. A few times in my life, I've heard a voice call out my name. It usually makes me stop for a minute, but at least twice, had I not stopped, I would have been in the path of a car going too fast to stop before it would have hit me. I strongly believe that Max has stuck around to be helpful, but had we not pulled out that Ouija board, I would have never known about him. Number 8. 